Welcome to Treasure Valley Podcast. I am Chuck. Today's episode is brought to you by Lower Gentry Studios. Here at Lower Gentry Studios, we create thought-provoking content with integrity, and we enjoy every aspect because we are hedonists. You can go to www.lowergentrystudios.com to get episodes of this podcast, as well as a feature film entitled We Speak and a web series entitled Canyon County. Today, we have a very special episode with us today is Darren Schaefer. He is the creator of... My theme music keeps playing there. I'll shut that off. He is the creator of the Cooper Vortex. Also, we have Zoe Kelly, who's going to be, we're going to be barraging him with questions from the left and the right. If you're listening to this and you're not watching it, one of us is seated on either side of him. And he's going to answer questions about D.B. Cooper, whether he wants to or not. He's in a little lower gentry sandwich. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for thanks for coming on. So you should probably inform people uh, about who D.B. Cooper was and why there is such a mystery surrounding his, his tale. D.B. Cooper is awesome. So D.B. Cooper gets to the Portland International Airport buys a one-way ticket to Seattle for $20 in cash. He writes on the ticket, Dan Cooper. Um, And this is November 24th, 1971. From Portland to Seattle, it's about a 45-minute flight. Uh, Shortly after takeoff, he hands the stewardess a note. She assumes it's just another businessman hitting on her, so she puts the note in her pocket and walks away. Uh, she comes back. All the seventies. <laughs> she comes back, and he's he lights like, a cigarette, <laughs> passes a note to the stewardess. He's like, "Here we go." <laughs> and uh, she comes back. He grabs her, and he's like, "Excuse me, ma'am, I've got a bomb. You might want to read that note." She reads the note. He's hijacking. <laughs> it the says, plane. "I have a bomb." <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And uh, he's hijacking the plane he wants two hundred thousand dollars and four parachutes ready for him on the ground when they land uh the plane flies over seattle for about two and a half hours i think um and then lands in seattle he gets his parachutes and his money he lets the passengers off who never knew they were being hijacked they didn't know this was huh. going on at oh all. wow um until they get off the plane and find out then the plane takes off from Seattle after some negotiation. He wants to fly to Mexico City, um, but has some very specific demands for the flight. He wants the plane to stay under 200 knots. He wants the flap set at 15 degrees, the cabin to be depressurized, and the plane to stay below 10,000 feet. Um, the pilot says, under those circumstances, we can't make it there with the fuel we have. They agree to stop in Reno to refuel. Then he requests that they take off with the rear air stairs down. He hijacked a very specific plane, the Boeing 727, where it had rear air stairs. So at the time, if they flew into a small airport, they didn't have one of those half truck, half flight of stairs trucks uh, to go up to it. This plane could just lower the rear air stairs so people could get on and off that way. Um, The pilot calls into uh, the air tower, says this guy wants to fly wants to take off with the rear air stairs down um they don't think that's possible he says it is possible but i'm not going to argue with you i'll just lower him in flight pilot calls again uh to air control hey he's planning on lowering the rear air stairs in flight is that going to make the plane crash they didn't know the answer to that either so they called boeing boeing said actually yeah you can lower the rear air stairs in flight it's not a big deal we've been doing some testing with that Um, I believe outside Vietnam at the time. So plane takes off. There was just the one stewardess left in the back with him. She, he instructs her to go up front in the plane. She sees him putting on a parachute. That's the last time anyone saw him. Uh, At one point, uh, 812, 813, the pilot noted a pressure bump in the cabin and the, the plane shuddered a little bit enough to cause correction. And then... Uh, they just noted that location. Uh, that's where they believe he jumped out. They're, they're not sure because they weren't standing there back there with him. With how, with how much money? $200,000. $200,000. bucks. Well, yeah, which is like a million and a quarter today. Oh, my gosh. With Still on the gold standard at that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot more worth worth uh, more each dollar for sure. So um, you've you've spent quite a bit of your time investigating 
the people and the theories behind what happened to D.B. Cooper after this? Are there theories about him before? Because this is kind of like this giant mystery between him and Sasquatch. I don't think that there's any other mystery that's larger in the in the Pacific Northwest. I'd agree. Uh, I mean, no one knows really who who he was at all. There's no information on him before the jump. There's no information on him after the jump at all. So he wrote his own name on the... He wrote Dan Cooper on the ticket. He wrote Dan Cooper on the ticket. So this was probably prior to picture ID or was yeah, it... Yeah, you, you didn't need to show ID at the airport at the time. Okay. Um, also, they didn't even look in his briefcase. He flashed the briefcase open at one point for the stewardess to see the bomb, I guess. Uh, and she said there were a bunch of red sticks and wires in there. Uh, most people don't believe it was actually a bomb, but... Hmm. Again, no one knows. He jumped with that. The only thing he left on the plane, he demanded his ransom notes back. The only thing he left on the plane was a black clip-on tie and then wow. a handful of cigarette butts. He he had two bourbon and sodas during the flight and smoked eight cigarettes. Huh. Um, and the cigarettes, the FBI has been releasing all these files from the Freedom of Information Act. They actually threw the cig cigarette butts away um, they, the note says, you know, look at these for evidence. If you don't find any evidence, then throw them away. So mm. unfortunately we don't have that anymore, which would be the best source for DNA. Mm -hmm. But so, the, so what are some of the speculations about DB Cooper and why, in your opinion, were you able to create, cause your podcast is, is huge. Like it's, it's enormous. It's, I think it's 18. Do you have 18 episodes so far? Yeah, yep. 18 episodes and they're all anywhere from like an hour to three hours in yeah. length. Yeah, is definitely. that fair? And, and each one is kind of based on a different theory or different details about the the D.B. Cooper story. Either. Yep. Both. I have a couple episodes, I think, that are different people discussing the same theory or a similar theory. But yeah, each one is different. I mean, all of it is basically speculation because nobody knows. So they're trying to fit a suspect into the db cooper profile which it honestly is easy there's not much known about him uh it it was a guy he is in between let's say five eight and six three because it's super hard to judge someone's height in an airplane oh um, yeah especially the people on the flight like i said they didn't know they were being hijacked so they weren't necessarily paying attention the only person who really remembered him because he sat in the back was a college kid who was upset that the hot stewardess was paying attention to the old guy in the back of the plane is mm. the only reason he remembered him. Interesting. And he's the only person to to get away with a airplane hijacking in the history of the United States, correct? Yeah. The only unsolved air piracy uh, in the world, I believe. Oh, OK. And w how did you get into the story of D.B. Cooper? I got into D.B. Cooper. I lived in Woodland, Washington at the time, and the theorized drop zone is like Amboy, Yakult, um, Ariel, that area. And so it's I'm the closest town to those kind of unincorporated areas. And I just had a passing interest in it because it was a local story. I got a book, Skyjack by Jeffrey Gray, as a gift from my wife. It sat around for a while. Um, I eventually did read it. It led to another book. That led to me kind of looking on these D.B. Cooper forums um, and reading more books about more suspects. And I just got way into D.B. Cooper. Um, I've read just about everything I can on it. I listened to every podcast I could find on it. And all the podcasts tended to be the same. I would go into Apple's podcast app and type in D.B. Cooper and there would be 30 different shows that have covered db cooper but it would be a podcast that does ghosts and bigfoot and then does a db cooper episode and they were all the same it would be 45 minutes long they would do 20 minutes of the actual hijacking what happened and then they would cover three or four suspects and then the three hosts would pick one of those and say yep yeah, that's who we think db cooper was mm. and I was just fast forwarding through uh, the hijacking port portion of all of those shows. Because it's, yeah, repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah, same and part I've of the heard story. it so many times. And even what happened on the plane, a lot of it, you can't nail it down. So I hate, 
I, I almost hate talking about what parachutes he had because I've read so many different answers to that. Um, the FBI files say different things. Uh, different people say they gave him the parachutes. It's just the few things that should be facts in this case aren't. And so it leaves a lot of room for, for speculation and, and making things fit your narrative or your suspect. Right. What's, the, what's the most interesting narrative you've heard for as far as D.B. Cooper? And do you have an, a podcast that you covered that? Yeah, I would say it's D.B. Cooper is transgender. Um, Barb Dayton, who got a sex change, I want to say um, in 66, she was born Robert Dayton. Um, and then... Gosh, I, sorry, I can't remember if it was 66 or 69 now, but she was the first person to get gender reassignment surgery in Washington state. Oh, and then okay. her life kind of isn't going how she thought. And then in 71, she pulls off the D.B. Cooper caper, um, dressed back up like a man again to prove that she's still kind of a badass. Um, and she did it to get back at the airline industry because she could never earn her commercial pilot's license because her vision wasn't good enough. So she, wow. <laughs> she uh, became a, a private pilot uh, and just flew for fun, but she could never go to that next level and be a commercial pilot. So she pulls off the D.B. Cooper hijacking um, to get back at the airline industry. That is an interesting tale. It is an interesting tale. So did you tale. meet some people that knew this person previously so yeah. it was Su Susie? Susie uh Barb Dayton Barb Dayton I don't know where I was going yeah Susie Barb from. Dayton um I spoke with the people who wrote the book about her um the foremans Ron Pat and Tammy Foreman and they're the, they're just the nicest people ever they met her in the 70s and thought it was odd that there was kind of like this older woman flying alone um, and, you know, Ron told me it was very odd at the time that there would be a woman hanging out at the airport and working on her own airplane herself. Uh, they just thought that was really unusual. And she disappeared around the same time as D.B. Cooper? No, no, she uh, she didn't. Oh. Um, she ends up telling the foremans later, uh, gosh, probably in, in the 80s or the 90s uh, about all of this. Um, and, and they believed her. She also told them a bunch of other wild stories about, you know, being a prisoner of war in the Philippines and merchant marine and uh, all these cr other crazy stories. It beat a man almost to death with a chain over a road rage incident. Uh, but they were able to verify all of her other crazy stories. So Interesting. the D.B. Cooper thing, they just thought, OK, well, um, this probably true also. And they were... Um, Pat was going to write a book about her no matter what, just because they thought that she was great and an inspirational person. And they debated on whether or not to put the D.B. Cooper portion in, um, but ultimately chose to. It is even the title of their book, uh, D.B. Cooper, Death by Nat... Uh, no, I'm sorry. The Legacy of D.B. Cooper, Death by Natural Causes, huh. I believe is the foreman's book. Really, so, really great. So Barb is no longer living. She passed or... Yeah, Barb passed. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember the year off the top of my head, um, but, but she died. She ended up marrying a, a gentleman from the airport that was friends with Ron and Pat from the same airport um, and then moved. He passed away and then she was living in, in Reno or Vegas um, when she passed away. Interesting. Yeah, it's a wild story. That is really crazy. Yeah, and they never, they say that they never found D.B. Cooper because they were looking for a man. Oh. And so <laughs> that would do it. That's why they never found, they never found D.B. Cooper because it was a woman. How did you get in contact with these people to be able to chat with them? Was it That easy? was, it was shockingly easy. So when I decided I was going to produce the show that I wanted, I made a list of five people and I thought if I could get two of these five people to agree to do this show, then then I'll go through with it. I hadn't bought any equipment. I had nothing. Okay. Uh, it was just an idea that I had. And so I emailed the five people. They were all in Washington State. And I thought, I'll just go drive uh, to Washington and interview them. All five of them agreed to do the show. And at, very quickly. So at that point, I was like, okay, uh, I actually have to do this. 
And so I drove, interviewed all five of them with some equipment that I had just bought. Um, and then turned that into the show. Nice. That's great. <laughs> yeah. It's, That's very inspiring. It's been working out very well. A mystery can inspire us in many different ways. So true. It can it can inspire us to think imaginatively about what might have happened to somebody <laughs> who is in the history books. and Well, not necessarily in the history books, but mostly local for- folklore probably or regional oh, yeah. folklore. And, I mean, to answer your, your question again about interesting D.B. Cooper suspects, I just did three episodes in a row about people who are both the Zodiac Killer and D.B. Cooper. Yeah. Okay. I listened to those. Yeah. <laughs> and some of those are pretty wild. Uh, I interviewed uh, Dr. David Kucher, uh, a.k.a. Dr. David Gold, and he believes that Frank Morris that escaped mm-hmm. from Alcatraz actually pulled off the D.B. Cooper caper and claims that he has killed over 25,000 people. So um, it's an interesting story that... that uh, Dr. Dr. Kutcher tells. And then um, Carol Ann Stanislaw, her dad is the Zodiac and D.B. Cooper. Um, and then I interviewed John Cameron in Montana about Ed Edwards, who is responsible for John Benet Ramsey, the Atlanta child killings, Teresa Hallback of Making a Murderer. He's wow. also the Zodiac and D.B. Cooper. So... S- s- so We're really a lot wrapping of these people, up a lot of crimes into one person. Yeah, that seems tool belt. <laughs> that seems like quite the quite the person to be able to execute all of those things. No yeah. pun intended. Um, what <laughs> what? Uh, so you your 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 goal was to get a podcast out of this with with a lot of content, which you successfully successfully did. Um, did you did you learn anything about like people's quest for for solving a mystery? Yes, definitely. Uh, I mean, my my goal for the show originally was I thought, you know, I could maybe get 20 episodes out of this. Um, and, you know, maybe there's 20 suspects that are kind of reasonable. I'll do an episode maybe on each suspect. Uh, and then if a few episodes in, um, my list of suspects was at like 45 people. Wow. Uh, so I thought, I don't, I don't know if I want to do 45 episodes on this, but... You kind of opened Pandora's box. When I you definitely started. have. And, and people emailing me, you know, have you heard about this person? Or I want to tell you about this person. Or, you know, my dad, I believe he was D.B. Cooper. Do you get emailed and bothered a lot since you put the podcast up online? Oh, oh yeah. Wow. There, there are times where I've woken up and had 12 emails um, from one person. And each email is like 10 paragraphs long. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh yeah. Well, uh, did you did you anticipate that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well then, there there I are I don't feel bad. <laughs> there are people that uh are are in the DB Cooper community that I would describe as relentless. Uh relentless in their pursuit of their suspect and I mean in 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 pushing that narrative. So, I mean, even you just coming along and saying, you know, I think I think D.B. Cooper was, uh, you know, Billy Bob. Uh, and then you could have somebody else attacking you on a personal level over that. Um, and it won't stop just because oh, you disagree with their suspect. I mean, if you go on some of these D.B. Cooper forums. And, okay. Where if we're looking for some interesting reading, which oh, are, yeah, like Reddit, is that? A there's good... three of them. Okay. There is the D.B. Cooper forum dot com. Oh, okay. Wow. Which that one tends to be. How long has that been up? Uh, three or four years. Oh, okay. Uh, and that one tends to be the same few people that kind of just dispel everything that comes along. You know, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, and then you have five people saying, "No, nah, it's not. That's not it. That's not it." Um, and they actively block troublesome users. So the the list of people that's blocked, I imagine, is longer than the list of people who participate in that forum. Okay. Then you have uh, the Drop Zone, which is actually a forum for skydiving and parachutists that had one small thread dedicated to D.B. Cooper. Um, and that has been going since 2005 or something like that. Oh, wow. And... That one was shut down in 2015 
because of death threats, because of bomb threats, because of people posting other people's personal addresses. What? Um, because it, of the D.B. Cooper case? Because of the D.B. Cooper case. Just <laughs> disagreements in theories. Oh, no. Um, so that got shut down. It was actually recently reopened, probably about six months ago. Um, in my opinion, it's kind of just quickly became the same dumpster fire. I don't imagine that it's going to stay open much longer because the the moderators of that forum don't need it. It's mm -hmm. not even a forum about D.B. Cooper. It's one thread on a massive forum about skydiving and parachuting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the D.B. Cooper thread on there, it's got to be like 10,000 pages long. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Dang. And that was the source of information for quite a while, till it, maybe until about 2012, I think, uh, when it started to get uh, really confrontational. Uh, and then the other one is Bruce Smith's Mount Bruce Smith's Mountain News. Okay, uh, it's a little bit harder to navigate, and it is, is a little more Wild West. Um, and then you have people posting other under other people's names on there, which just adds another level of insanity to that community. Okay. So you're not even sure if you're talking to who you think you're talking to. There. So some people just don't, they want to have multiple personalities within the same forum and make sure that they can side, get more people on their side that way. Yeah, is that talk to themselves. I really don't <laughs> know what the motivation others. is. Interesting. Is there, but you'll see it. You're, you, I know, because I know these people now. And so I'll read something under someone's name and it's like, I know they didn't say that. I, you know, I know they've never even been to this forum. Mm -hmm. So... That's interesting. I'm almost uh, scared to share my theory with you now. I uh, have a... Zoe came up with her own theory about D.B. <laughs> Cooper, which I'm right. excited to hear about. I, I'm ready for it. I feel like it's not the first time you've heard this, but so I had never heard of D.B. Cooper until today. And I went down about an hour, hour and a half YouTube channel rabbit hole. Um, and it started with D.B. Cooper and it ended with the multiverse and parallel universes. So my theory is D.B. Cooper successfully came into our universe, got $200,000, and then as he was jumping, he or she, I suppose, jumping down, he transported himself back into his own universe with $200,000. And he's gone forever. Hmm. Have you heard the multiverse theory? I haven't heard the multiverse <laughs> wow. theory. Wow. Victory. So that yes. is a first. Win. But if he could do that, why does he need to jump out of the plane? Yeah, do we have any, like, what about the money in the multiverse? I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know much about his particular universe, so <laughs> I, I'm not an expert, but, the, you know. It still aligns with the facts. <laughs> there is, uh, there was some money found on Tina Barr in 1980, nine years after the hijacking. is was $5,800, $6,000. And, uh... Where it was found, it's kind of like 10 miles west of the flight path. Um, and no one really has a, a good reason for how the money got there. So mm -hmm. I'm willing to entertain the parallel universes. Maybe in the explosion of the portal closing, the money exactly flew over to Tina Bar. So Yeah. I mean, it, there, it's very unpredictable when you get that blue light going and everything. <laughs> I went it's really a, deep it's into a lot of this energy. rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Darren, where can people listen to your podcast? They can listen to my podcast wherever they listen to podcasts. Um, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, CastBox, Google Podcasts. Is there, and you said that one of your favorite was the episode where you talked about the theory about D.B. Cooper being transgender and frustrated about eyesight. Yeah, that's a good one. D.B. Cooper is transgender is a really good one. D.B. Cooper is special forces with Bruce Smith is a good one. Um, the one I recently did with Bill Rollins is is awesome. Uh, D.B. Cooper had a grudge. Um, I love all the episodes, but those are those are some really good ones I'd recommend. And you, they don't need to be listened to in any order. Every episode is standalone. So just pick a title that interests you and go for it. Cool. And look up the Cooper Vortex. Thanks for coming on today. We should probably end with the word of the day, right? <gasps> yes. Word of the day. Word of the day. Word of the day. Word of the day. We've got the word of the day. What will we say? The word of the day. You will learn something today, and here it comes, the word of the day. 
cat. I'm not as loquacious as Elliot, so he wasn't able to give us the word of the day. I hope that was just as entertaining and as lightning as his job on that normally. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Darren, and talking to us about your uh, web series or your podcast. And uh, Elliot, or not Elliot, he's gone. Zoe, thank you for (laughs) joining us as well. Um, You can catch uh, the Cooper Vortex on wherever you would download a podcast you can also check out uh, this podcast at www.lowergentrystudios.com we also just released we speak it is a amazon it is on amazon prime and i need to learn how to speak better when i'm doing the outro (laughs) have a good day